Hi, and welcome to the Nonprofit Podcast. I'm Jenna, a nonprofit advocate here at DonorBox. I'm so happy you chose to join me for today's truly uplifting episode, a motivating moment with Upward Scholars, a lean nonprofit team from California's Bay Area, achieving outstanding results despite the challenging times we've all been through recently. My guests are a real reminder that one of the reasons I love my job so much is getting to meet some truly remarkable people and then share the experience with you. So let's get to it. My name is Jenna and I am here from DonorBox and today I am so very excited to be joined by two incredibly inspirational people, um, Dr. Linda Prieto and Bertha Sanchez um, from the Upward Scholars. Now I want to do a quick introduction uh, really quick. So uh, Dr. Linda is the executive director of an amazing nonprofit called Upward Scholars, which is based in the California Bay Area. Upward Scholars mission is to provide adult immigrants the boost they need to move up the economic ladder through education and career development support. And Bertha is an Upward Scholars student and is here today to share with us her incredible story of growth. And I have also heard that there was a graduation recently. Um, so congratulations. Um, and thank you both so much uh, for being here. I'm Dr. Linda, um, can you share with us a little bit more about Upward Scholars and the work that you're doing? Absolutely. So Upward Scholars were actually located in the Northern Bay Area, specifically in San Mateo County. And we serve students who attend uh, any of the three San Mateo Community College uh, campuses in the district. And what we do is we provide academic financial and career development support. And so what that typically looks like in the academic side is uh, volunteers in the community who serve as tutors and meet one-on-one -on -one with our students or uh, English conversation partners who also meet one-on-one -on -one with our students uh, safely right now virtually since the pandemic began. And then also a monthly English conversation club that we hold for another opportunity for our students to continue practicing their English listening and speaking skills. On the financial side, what we do is we cover the textbooks uh, for our students when they enroll at the community college. Uh, if they drive, we provide transportation assistance in the form of covering their permits to park on campus. And for those students who don't drive, then we uh, buy into their public transport system here, which is a local bus system, and we pay into their accounts on a monthly basis. Um, if students don't have a laptop, we also provide a laptop. And since the pandemic began, we've also been providing hotspot support so that they can continue to log into their classes virtually. Uh, the career development piece of what we offer is the newest uh, support area for our program. And we literally began that with a small pilot at the end of 2019 and have really picked it up after hiring a, a program manager dedicated to uh, building out our career development programs. And so those are opportunities for our students to gain additional professional skills and new careers that they want to move into. So whether that's starting their own business and entrepreneurship skills, or if that's becoming a Spanish language coach, for example, where they can have clients that they meet with also currently virtually and pay them directly, um, especially as a number of our students, unfortunately, lost their jobs during the pandemic, uh, many of whom were working in visible jobs, like in the restaurant industry, uh, behind closed doors or as domestic workers and in individual homes or landscapers, for example. Wow. Uh, so to say the least, you um, have your hands in a lot of different pots and you're serving others um, in so many different ways. Um, that is incredible. Uh, what an amazing service that you're offering. Uh, and uh, I understand that you are the only nonprofit that is serving this community um, in your area. Yes, that's correct. We are the only nonprofit in the Bay Area. And actually, I haven't heard of another nonprofit doing similar work in the state of California because we're focused on serving that adult immigrant population, non-traditional students, median age, 34 to 35 years of age, who 70% of whom are women and almost 70% of whom are also uh, parents of school-age children. Wow. So not only are they juggling their full-time family responsibilities and work responsibilities, but then on top of that, choosing to take uh, college uh, level courses um, 
you know, they're part time and in the evening sometimes also. Um, and so that's a, it's a really special population that I get to work with every day and provide, like you said, a, a service that's not being provided by any other nonprofit currently. Can you talk a little bit about um, how many clients you're serving and the impact um, that Upward Scholars is having? Sure. You know, we have been around, this is year 11 for us. Uh, and we began uh, 11 years ago with two students that we were supporting and then slowly started to climb into uh, a handful of more students, 20 students, and then 75, sort of growing over time, uh, reaching our peak in 2019 with nearly 400 students. Uh, but again, during the pandemic, uh, we saw a number of students uh, who for us, actually, the majority of our participants in the program did lose their jobs at the onset of the pandemic. Um, and many of those students were unable to regain employment. And so many of the students were forced out of our uh, county. Um, and so our numbers reflect that, uh, just like our public school uh, children numbers dropped, so did the, the parents, which would be the students in our program as they left the county. So we lost close to 100 students uh, in 2020, uh, serving by the end of the year about 270. 75 students, and then um, saw another dip again between December and the beginning of this year, uh, but still hoping to serve by end of the year 250 students. Wow, that is amazing. Um, we also, at the end of last year, launched our first ever student safety net fund, and that was also a direct res uh, response to what students were telling us their needs were, right? Students were coming to us for the first time saying, you know, I've lost my job. I don't know how I'm going to pay my rent. I don't know how I'm going to pay my utilities, food, child care, medical expenses, for example. And all along, we've been, you know, referring them out to other partners. Okay, well, here's a program that's going to offer you rent support for one to three months, right? Go there, apply, or here's a special uh, program that's offering aid to immigrants. Uh, apply there. And our students were, they were doing it, they were going everywhere. And come November, they had tapped out all those resources. And so they started to come to us for the very first time as individual staff uh, members and asking not only what can Upward Scholars do for me, but what can you, Jenna, do for me? Can you lend me some money for rent so I can make rent, so I can go buy groceries or personal hygiene products for this month for my family and myself? So at that point, I knew we had to, again, stretch and do something really different. I went to my board and I said, look, I think we need to launch our first ever student safety net fund so that students can indeed apply to receive aid for us to cover these things, rent, food, utilities, um, childcare and medical care uh, related expenses. Uh, and typically at the year end appeal, we would raise, when the first year I was here, we raised $30,000, which was more than the year before. And my second year we raised $50,000. And so in 2020, I said, okay, I want to raise a hundred a hundred thousand dollars. Let's double that, right? Like high pie in the sky, a really big uh, goal for us as a small nonprofit. Um, I think the board was a little weary, but said, "Okay, you think you can do it? Go for it." Um, and so we did. And from uh, middle of November to the end of uh, 2020, we raised nearly $150,000. So not only did we meet that really high lofty goal, but you know we almost tripled the money that we brought in from the year before and specifically told our donors, this is exactly what we're going to use this money for. This is not general operating funds. This is not programmatic funds. This is specifically to go back into our students' hands. So we were able to um, serve about 75, 000, 75 of our students who were in the um, highest need, anywhere from $75 of support to $8,500 uh, of support. And so for us, that's been a, you know, a really great way, again, to retain our students, to, to help them to take care of their families, to let them know that they're not alone, that we continue to believe in them, and that as long as they continue on their academic journey, we're going to be there alongside with them. Uh, something that I want to highlight, since you did um, talk about the amazing funds that you raised, um, you are a, a small staff, right? And uh, you, just like many um, nonprofit, uh, you know, executive directors, you're wearing a lot of different hats. So um, what you told me in one of our initial calls was that you were doing um, a lot of these campaigns on your own. How is that uh, going for you? How was it raising those funds? And um, what do you think made it 
so that you were so successful in uh, meeting that goal and saying, yes, told you, my board, that we were going to do this, um, and you did it. So uh, do you have any uh, secrets there um, besides just hard work and passion? Um, what do you think really, um, really uh, set you up for success? I think it was a combination of things. It was actually one of my board members who came to me having heard of DonorBox and suggested that we look into it um, as a new way uh, for folks to easily make donations online. And so it worked out wonderfully that we were able to launch this uh, the campaigns through DonorBox during the pandemic, right, where people were not gathering, said, okay, well, let's let's try this online tool and let's try DonorBox in particular after we'd vetted about four different options um, and let's see what happens, right? Let's try to, to see if our existing donors uh, relate to the online use and then also if it'll help us to attract new donors who are perhaps maybe more used to um, online um online giving already. So um, I, you're right, we're a small staff. Uh, when I started two and a half years ago, I was the only full-time employee with a part-time student uh, supporting me. Uh, in the two and a half years that I've served as executive director, I've grown our team to five staff that make up roughly four uh, uh, FTE. Um, uh, but none of those are development staff. And so I am still the number one fundraiser for the organization, but the board has um, also had additional uh, training to better support the fundraising efforts and be more involved. So whenever there's a campaign um, happening, for example, one of the things I like about DonorBox is that it's super easy to send that URL onto the board and to have the board then forward it on to their friends for us to incorporate it into our monthly newsletters and send that out to all of our um, uh, all of our partners uh, on the newsletter as well. So in that way, DonorBox has been great because it's really easy to pass along, right? And there's so many ways in which people can give online, whatever their preference might be, debit, credit card, PayPal, whatever extension, Apple Pay, Google Pay they might be using um, is super helpful. Uh, and then there's also, I think, a, a, a segment of our donors who've always given via a more traditional check, whether that's a personal check or from their donor advice fund. And so the fact that DonorBox has the functionality to allow us to enter offline donations and uh, that are still associated with that same campaign has been great. Uh, I'm a fan of the progress bar myself. I like being able to say to people, I have a goal to raise $100,000 and any given day they can jump on and they can see how much closer we are to reaching that goal. And in the case of our um, safety net fund uh, campaign at the end of last year to see when we had surpassed that goal. Um, and so we've used a progress bar with every campaign we've had so far uh, with DonorBox. Uh, again, not just for my own ease of knowing where we are, but to help our, our donors or potential uh, uh, prospect donors also see where we are, how far we are from our goal. And maybe that also encourages how much uh, they're willing to give, right? When they see us getting closer, for example. Right. Um, so yeah, it's been a really great tool for us to use. I think again, there's um, people can be located anywhere across the world, pretty much, right, and be able to access it. So that also um, helps. We can include it in our social media, which we do, and people can have access outside of our website to it, outside of our uh, traditional newsletters, um, and it's pretty easy in that way as well. Looking to take your fundraising to the next level? Get access to advanced fundraising tools, integrations, and automation with DonorBox Premium. Features like these make a huge impact on your bottom line, but we take it a step further with priority support, powerful analytics, and quarterly one-on-one -on -one calls with fundraising coaches to help you on your fundraising journey. Next level engagement, next level fundraising. Feel the power of DonorBox Premium, helping you help others. That's an amazing testimony. Uh, thank you so much for that. And I'm so glad that we're able to provide the tools you need to help you help others. Um, that is our mission. Gosh, I just, I marvel at all that you're doing. Um, grown to a staff of five and you're doing so much and raising so much and impacting so many. Um, and one of those people um, has been oh so patiently um, waiting for an introduction. So I, I want to introduce Bertha again. And Bertha is a student of Upward Scholars. And um, let me tell you that Linda, um, when we had first gotten on a call said, I have a story to share with such passion um, that it gave me goosebumps. So um, Bertha, I 
want to introduce you and um, kind of hear a little bit about um, your growth story and where it all began and where you are now and um, just kind of uh, tell the world um, what Upward Scholars has helped you with and um, you know what inspires you um, every day to be as awesome as you are. Thank you. Um, yes, um, I would like to tell you a little bit about me. Uh, one of my motivation was uh, my kids uh, to learn English. It was one of my goals first. Uh, the reason was because uh, sometimes they send me um, papers, reports, all things that my son needs to do from school. And it was so hard for me to do it. So I can even read English. So then from there, I decide to look for something else and encourage myself to learn English. That was my main goal. And um, I started from the outdoor school and then our scholars. So after that, I started going for my classes. I did ESL um, and I from there I have to move to Canada College until I graduate. But one of the motivation was the our scholars. Without their support, I probably I wouldn't be able to graduate from uh, college and go to university. Um, they support me a lot. I just get all the advantages I couldn't get from there. The one thing that is really helping me to uh, continue studying and really um, make my um, goals, uh, they provide me a tutor. And uh, from that tutor, I'll just, if I get stuck in something, they really support me and anything I need, I know I was holding my hands every time from our scholars. Mm -hmm. Even like on COVID-19, I, I lost my job and uh, they support me. Um, they support not only me, but my family. Like every 15 days they were sending me like a box with food and uh, other uh, things that we need for home. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm very appreciative of their support. They're, they have been helping me with everything, yes. That is incredible. And now um, I have mentioned this earlier, uh, and thank you so much for sharing. Um, you had a graduation recently, is that correct? Yes, I did, yes. So uh, tell me a little bit about that. Um, what was that like for you? And um, tell us um, what, you, um, what you are studying now and what, what your goals are. Yes. Um, so right now I graduate. I got a um, associate's in science. Um, I'm taking early childhood development classes. I'm done with that, but I'm going to uh, USF University to continue with education. Um, and I got a full-time job as a preschool teacher. That's very exciting. Um, yeah. That's and okay. I, I don't want to downplay at all Becca's achievements because she's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to get... So does USF in the fall. Berta is our first Upward Scholar student ever to be admitted to the University of San Francisco wow. as a transfer student. This is huge. If, for those of who follow education, know that transfer student rates are really, really low to all universities, especially to um, more prestigious private universities, such as the University of San Francisco. And so I am so proud of that for her accomplishments. Like she said, she completed her ESL pass certificate at the adult school. She moved on to the community college. She completed that more rigorous ESL program there. Then she went on to pursue her associate's degree in early childhood education, which you know, now all these years later, she's in the fall going to be enrolling at the University of San Francisco and receiving wonderful uh, tuition support from the university because of her merit and all of her academic achievements. And, and for her now to have, you know, this full time job as a teacher um, at a preschool, I mean, what a great role model, not only for her own family and her children, but for other students in the program coming be behind her as well. That's incredible. And um, Bertha, you are so humble. I was going to say that and call you out on that. Um, this is a massive in achievement. And um, gosh, I know that you are inspiring so many others and inspiring your children. And they're seeing you every day working hard and, you know, being an awesome student, being an awesome mom, being an awesome worker. Um, this is a big deal. And um, I'm very, I'm very excited um, to learn more about your story. For any mom that is starting out where you did, 
are there any words of wisdom or advice that you would give somebody um, in your shoes starting on their journey? Um, well, something is like, um, I always try to give, um, think about something in my life that it will make me feel better. And um, I will say, I make my goals to uh, go through all the things I want to do in my life. So and I would add, I mean, even the fact that you are setting goals and that you are reaching those goals. And then yes. every time you reach that goal, you come up with a new goal, right? Like hearing you right now talk about like, okay, you got your associate's degree and now you're on to the bachelor's degree. And in the future, it might also include a master's degree, right? And I think that's one of the things that I really admire about you, Berta, is that you set clear goals, you meet those goals, and then you say, okay, what's my next goal? And now what do I need to do to meet that goal too? And I think that that level of persistence and the confidence that you need also to be able to do that is um, something that I hope all of our students will be able to ex experience too. Absolutely. Uh, Bertha, you seem unstoppable. Um, you are a woman with a plan and um, I, I just see you, um, as this amazing inspiration for um, any woman, any any mom, um, any student, just setting these goals and really committing um, no matter what. And again, doing it with such grace and being so humble about it, which um, brag about yourself, you should, this is awesome. Um, but thank you, thank you so much for sharing that. And for any of those that will be listening to this recording, um, please, Take Bertha as inspiration and set those goals, believe in yourself and keep on going because um, there are people out there that support you and want to see you succeed and you are going to do it. So thank you, thank you, thank you for sharing that. Now, this is my turn to say the floor is yours, um, Upward Scholars. What's going on? What announcements do you have? And um, what can we look out for? What type of support do you need? Anything. Thank you, Jenna. Well, I think like uh, every nonprofit, we always need financial support, right? Fiscal support. We we do what we're able to do every year and support our students in the ways that we're able to support them because of, of the donations that we receive, right? Whether through individuals or foundations or corporations or government agencies. So first and foremost, I, I wouldn't be an effective uh, executive director if I didn't make that plug. Uh, but also what I'd like, would love to share in terms of what's new and, and upcoming for us as an organization, as, as we spoke about earlier in, in our call today, you know, we are the only organization uh, in the Bay Area doing this work, the only organization that I know of in California doing this work. And so our next um, phase of scaling will take us outside of San Mateo County. And so we are uh, working on that this summer. We're hoping uh, by spring of 2022, if not sooner, to enroll other adult immigrant students um, from other areas in the Bay, our neighboring counties, um, you know, throughout the state, and will continue to grow as long as there is a need for immigrants to continue to learn English and uh, go to college and improve their skill set to uh, be able to follow their dreams, whatever those might be, um, then we'll continue to exist and be there alongside them. So that's the latest and greatest for us uh, to be in a new phase of scaling um, and be able to share and highlight stories like that for us to encourage other adult immigrants uh, to also continue their education. Um, it is not easy work, um, but uh, again, you do it with such grace and passion. So um, on behalf of everyone from DonorBox, uh, we are so grateful uh, to help you help others. Bertha's story just sets my soul soaring. What a wonderful woman with so much going for her. So often when we think of social impact, we think big picture and lose sight of how profoundly individual lives change. Linda and the Upward Scholars team only five of them, wow, have held fast through COVID with their unstoppable spirit, literally changing the course of people's lives, reminding us all this is why we do what we do. The Nonprofit Podcast is all about keeping the impact of our work front of mind. Staying in touch with on the ground results can be challenging, which is why we're here with a new, inspiring, informative, and always interesting interview every Thursday. 
So follow, rate, and download the nonprofit podcast today. And be sure to join us next time when we meet Atlanta-based Josiah Kids, who are shaping the next happy, fulfilled, and empowered generation of surface-minded leaders. Until next time, stay inspired. The Nonprofit Podcast, powered by DonorBox, helping you help others.